Do you ever wonder what happens when the police leave? Crime scene cleaners are private companies that handle the cleanup after the police are gone. Spalding Decon is one of the nation's largest cleanup companies handling the aftermath of homicides, suicides, decompositions, hoarding, and much more. These are our stories. We are here in Anthony, Florida. It's actually our first COVID victim. He passed away about 10 days ago now, was found after eight days. Riding that horse, though. That's oh, what I would God, really I love to do. God. The horse? Have you never seen a horse before? Oh, I've seen a horse. It's okay, honey. I've never seen a horse. Don't worry about it. We're putting on the white. Getting into my suit here. Falling <laughs> <laughs> over. I am, man. I'm all over the place. Tuck it in. Tuck it in. Yeah, don't mind me. We are here in Anthony, Florida, doing a, it's actually our first COVID victim. He passed away about 10 days ago now, was found after eight days. Um, Anthony, Florida is this little itty, itty bitty hole in the wall. Thaddeus and I are suiting up and we're gonna decontaminate the area first, make it safe for us to go in there since it is COVID. Uh, we're gonna fog the area. We're gonna wait about five minutes before we enter back into the building. And then we will fog the area again a second time before leaving our ozone machine, since it only takes about 90 seconds for our chemical to kill COVID. See you inside. So it's a super, super small area. We just moved some shit out of the way. The fogger has shockwave in it already. Leave the clothes. For right now, yeah. Brand new carpet. This is where he died. So we are only instructed to disinfect and remove the biohazard from the carpet. So they're gonna grab the bio and the dis or the, the fogger, the bio bin and the disinfectant, fog the area, breathe the fresh air in the country for about five minutes, let the disinfectant do its thing, and uh, we'll be able to get in here and tackle this portion here. give you guys a little bit of inside here. Thaddeus is uh, decontaminating the area because it's a confirmed COVID death. So what he's doing is he's making it safe for us to go in and work. I'm trying to limit the amount of people in and out of there currently, just so we don't do the cross contamination thing, especially with COVID. The day has kind of been mapped out. Uh, Thaddeus and I work really, really good together. We just kind of fall into place. So uh, it's going to be 100% stress-free, and we're going to rock and roll. Yeah, so all of my family is from the country. Um, so coming out here and doing a job like this in the country is actually super, super relaxing. I know a lot of our situations, it's just an automatic, like, no-stress situation. It's super, super peaceful. I hear the dragonflies buzzing in the background with cicadas and, like, the crickets, and, and you see butterflies flying around. And, I mean, it's just all around just that super, super chill, super calming. On my breaks and things like that, I take a bunch of photos and stuff like that and blast my social media with them. But um, I guess that's Florida life. And being out here in the country, it, it just reminds me of up north. So I'll show my family up there what true Florida living is. I uh, mean, I'm from, you know, Nashville, Tennessee. I uh, grew up a little bit outside Kentucky as well, uh, Russellville, Kentucky. So this kind of reminds me of being home, countryside, you know, dirt roads, not many stoplights, uh, four-way intersection, horses, uh, snakes, a lot of bugs. And it's just, you know, pulling up here in Ocala just kind of reminded me of being there, uh, appreciating where I was from and everything. Yo, Thad, what day is it? Hump day! 
Yeah! Look, we're being recorded while recording. That's awkward. <laughs> So we'll clear all this shit up first. Throw it in here? Yep. Thanks. I'm actually just trying to see if it got under the subfloor. This part is, you can see it. Yep. part A on it what that does is it actually draws out the biohazard we're gonna scrub it um, it doesn't look like it penetrated deep into it so should be a hundred percent good after we scrub it sanitize the area you can see that it's all pretty much cleared out now luckily it was cool enough in here it's just because there's so much airflow inside the bottle see So you can see like we have just this little bit of little itty bitty bit of an indication and I'm actually gonna just try to chip because it's OSB board. I'm gonna just try to chip that little itty bitty bit out because it doesn't look like it got in super, super, super deep. I would rather put a little bitty divot into the subfloor like this. Ooh, that was my finger. Damn. I'd rather do just a little bit of this here. That can be filled in with uh, like wood putty. I have indicator in there. So I'm gonna turn the vacuum on and suck her up. So what Kyle did, he gave a, had an indicator to where, you know, we was trying to locate how much of the blood was still remaining. Um, indicated that, uh, went ahead and scrubbed and removed that. So that way, you know, all surfaces of blood that was on, on that surface was, you know, removed. I mean, it's kind of cool in there, but you can't really feel the temperature with the Tyvek suit on. There's a slight odor, which is why we're leaving our ozone machine. I've already spoken with the client um, and she's super happy with what's, what's kind of been happening today. So it was a small, it was a small job just because I think it was the new carpet, the brand new padding, which was phenomenal carpet and padding. It had only gone down maybe two eighths of an inch. So it was easier to chip it out rather than exposing the entire underground of the house because it is a, a manufactured home. I'm gonna go through the house, make sure that there's no living plants um, to, and just set them outside just because uh, when we use the ozone machine, it, it adds an extra molecule in the air, which suffocates everything. So I'm a huge plant guy. There's no animals in the house. So I just wanna make sure that there's no nothing living is actually uh, going to die in the process. So 
I'm sorry, I've lost my dross. Not so we're pretty much done inside. Um, so what I'm trying to do is just on a job because we're so far away like this. We're two and a half hours from the from the office. Um, I'm trying to. That's actually looking around the building to see if we have a water source. So that way we can clean and sanitize all of our equipment before we leave. So if we have the ability, we have the ability to clean and sanitize all of our stuff. People ask all the time when they see us, uh, they, when we're in our monkey suits, they, they automatically, automatically know. Some people come to us for verification and other people just walk up and say thank you. Um, so, you know, we've had uh, three of the neighbors actually come to us and they're all extremely devastated at the situation because I guess the gentleman was extremely, was an extremely nice guy and uh, one of the neighbors that I had just spoken with, she actually knows what we do. So she just wanted to verify if everything was safe for the family to come in and I said, that's what we're here to do, so. Yeah. I'm hungry, what are we doing for lunch? You know where you wanted to go. Yeah, go get that roast beef. Get that beef. Yeah, it's not just that beef, that roast beef. That roasted beef. Yeah, that roasted roast, oh, this that is how slow you take roast. Dirt road. You go like this with the steering wheel, like this, like you're doing something, but you ain't actually doing a damn thing. I think that's how they do it in Hollywood, too. I'm yeah. not 100% sure, but. I watch a lot of Hollywood stuff. I watch a lot of Hollywood stuff, too. All right, so this is how small this town is, right? So we are coming up on the only stop sign in this town. And it's not light. It's oh, it's a flash. flashing light. Like, that's it. And then, so this is where everybody does their grocery shopping. Yeah. At the feed store. Yeah, at the feed store at the farmer supply. I mean, when you stepped out of the vehicle, and immediately puffed on your inhaler, I figured that you had never been to the country before because your lungs didn't know how to take it. Like there's no smog, there's no, there's no anything. Like there's horses in the field. I have a different country scent than I do city scent. Thanks for watching guys. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and ring that bell to be notified of the next episode. For more information, visit any of our locations. That's it guys, on to the next.